And he also told, Punjanu Pakha, that remembering his wife, what he became? He became lady and his wife became a son and again married. So, we should be very careful. And also, one thing, that if Bharat Maharaj, in the last time, he remembered that dear, dear, and became dear, if he will remember Krishna, the dasi of Rupmanjari, why not you will be there? But automatically it will not come. Practice from beginning, and this is Ashtakaliya Lila. So, I think you should be prepared for this. Then, Krishna keep on Gyan for it. भगवान ने कृपा ज्ञान करे ये सब गुरु भोग करते हुए हाँ कत्ते इनु कंपाम सुसुम अक्षमाणो बुंजार ए वात मुक्तम विपाकम if you are doing भजन sometimes some bad thing will come suffering may come Sometimes happiness may come. How you should be at that time, that is there. Tate nu kampam susumit samadu. If suffering coming or happiness coming, if suffering coming, don't be eh, disturbed. That is, I have, what I have done in past, it is coming. And I will have to test it. And this is coming by the mercy of Krishna. He is our like father. Sometimes he may give a slap. Sometimes he will what? And praise and sometimes he will give nimbaras, bitter things. And sometimes he will. So, we should think that <coughs> only I am of Krishna. So, what Krishna is doing? Suffering or happiness? Do you coming to? Oh, Krishna. So, what should I do? If they are coming, be calm and quiet. Always remembering Krishna. And then Ajit Krishna will be Satan prasangama virja sambhidau bhavantarit karna rasayana katha tajyo sanat asu apabharg vartmani satha ratti bhakti anukhanisha. In Sadhu Sangha, Krishna is available easily, but in your life so Krishna bhakta Satan, they are very rare in this world. If they are to have their association in very rare, only it is Surat that is. If mercifully they are coming to us in my door, in our country, and giving their son, otherwise not. Atibedan Swami Maharaj, he came personally, door to door, and preached everywhere. You could not go. A disciple could not go. So, Narada Rishi goes door to door, 
and tells them Hari Kathar Sri. And then he brings them to Krishna. So, Kate Nukampam Susumakshman Unjani Evatma Kritam Vipakam Vidhatan Namaste Jadai Bhago. He will be Daipa. Daipa means he will be the inheritant of what? Mukti. Mukti Pade. Pade means he, Mukti is in the lotus feet of Bhakti. And really you will be in globe Vrindavan Sarvahim Krishna for always. So, we should not waste our time, always engage yourself. What I am telling, what Shastri is telling, keep in your pocket and follow all these things. Then, <coughs> Oh Bhagyam, Oh Bhagyam, Nanda Gopriyau Sham, Janmitram Paramanandam Purna Prabhupada Who is Krishna? Who is Supreme Parabrahma? Paratmar Brahma. Hmm? But now he is a friend, most beloved, someone's son, and thus he is very easy for them, Prajavasis. Hmm? So I am doing Namaskar to that Brahma. Kadbhuri Bhagyamiha Janam Kima Patapyam. Jajgokulepi Katmaan Rajo Vishekam. Jajjivitam tu nikhalam bhagavan mukunda jasdhyab padar jasut nikya meva. Oh, I will be very fortunate that any, anyhow I will take birth in Vrindavan as, as a gross, as a tree, as any devotee of Vrindavan. But Krishna is telling, you have not done any thing that you will be in Vrindavan. Then he telling, go, go kule api. Even in Gokul, not even not Vrindavan, but in even Gokul. What? There I want to be a piece of a stone. Where Haddika, Haddika means sweepers. When they will come, and they will put their feet on that piece of stone and and their dust I will have. I am very fortunate. Even so, Vrindavan Naji is not so easy. Brahma is praying for this. The Jivitan to Nikhilam. Krishna is the life and soul of all Prajivasi. Suti Migya, Vedas and Upanishad. They are doing tastarities, but not available the dust feet of Krishna. So he is going on doing. Then Krishna Mante went to Vrindavan from Chattikara. And then he sum up the cows and sum up the friend. Very thirsty, <coughs> they took the jam Kali Harada water. Krishna was going to stop them. Don't, don't, but they easily take. And they at once died. And then what Krishna did? So Srila Gurudev completed uh, a narration of the prayers spoken by Lord Brahma to Krishna 
after he had stolen Krishna's calves and cowherd boys. And in the discussion of Krishna's pastimes and leelas in the 10th canto, now Srila Gurudev is bringing us to the pastime of Kaliya Damana Leela. So, as Gurudev described, one day Krishna always would go with his cowherd boyfriends along the banks of the Jamuna River and he would be herding the cows there. So they would play so wonderfully along the banks of the Jamuna. There would be very beautiful trees and uh, kunjas and forests all along the bank and the cows would generally come to the bank of the Jamuna and the Jamuna's river water was so crystal clear and pure, very refreshing. The cows and the cowherd boys, they would drink this water from the Jamuna river to refresh themselves. But uh, one day they came there and when they were drinking the water of the Jamuna, actually they died. Uh, they lost consciousness and they fell there on the bank of the Jamuna. Why? Because uh, there was one very, very poisonous serpent who had come there to a small place in the Jamuna River called uh, like a hrad, like a little lake, a little separate part of the Jamuna River. This serpent was named Kaliya. And Kaliya was very frightened to, because he was the enemy of Garud, the carrier, the bird carrier of Lord Vishnu. And in order to hide from Garuda, Kaliya came there and hid in the Jamuna River area. But because Kaliya was full of so much poison and venom, he had many heads, many headed serpent. And this venomous poison contaminated all of the uh, water in that area. Not only was the water poisonous, but even the fumes which were coming up from that water, they were so poisonous that even some birds flying over, they even died. So in this way, uh, Kaliya was staying there in the Jamuna, but the cowherd boys, they did not know this. And now they came and drank the water and they lost consciousness on the bank of the Jamuna there. So Sri Krishna, who is the dear most friend of all the cows and the cowherd boys, he is Govinda, uh, one who gives pleasure to the cows, to the gopas, to the gopis. And he is the protector of all the inhabitants of Vrindavan. So at that time, Sri Krishna, he thought, yes, now I must have battle with this serpent, Kaliya, and I must make him leave this river Jamuna. So Kali was within the river Jamuna, and Krishna now climbed up onto one tree on the bank of the Jamuna river. When we go on our Brajamandala Parikrama, we go to that very place, that very place is called Kaliya Hrad, and that the, there is one Kadamba tree there. So Krishna climbed up into this Kadamba tree. And when he was standing there on the branches of the Kadamba tree, oh, now he began to tie his uh, cloth around his waist and prepare himself for battle, just like a wrestler will pull up his dhoti and prepare himself for battle. Krishna was standing on the branch of this tree and now he began to slap his arms, just like a wrestler will slap his arms to prepare for battle. So at that time, Krishna, who was only a, a, a small boy, now Krishna jumped into the river Jamuna. And when Krishna plunged into the waters of the Jamuna, it was as if some huge gigantic object had plunged into the Jamuna, even though he was a small cowherd boy. And the whole waters of the Jamuna shot up in every direction. So then, now Krishna began to swim and as he swam, Kaliya emerged from the waters of the Jamuna with all of his heads in all directions, very blackish color and jewels on his forehead and his eyes with very piercing glance, his tongues moving in all directions. So Sri Krishna began to swim toward Kaliya. So Kaliya, as he saw Krishna, he felt very much envy toward Krishna. Generally, the snake, the, the living entities who are in the bodies of the snakes, they have so much envy within them. So when Kaliya saw Krishna, 
he immediately he wanted to attack him. So Krishna began to swim towards Kaliya and they now began to circle around each other. And as Krishna was swimming in this way, oh, suddenly Kaliya with all of his tentacles, he began to snatch Krishna and he wrapped Krishna in his tentacles and now started plunging Krishna in the waters of the Jamuna like this. So in the meantime, so many, so many omens were seen, very inauspicious omens were seen in the sky. And when these omens came in the sky, oh, all the bridge bosses in the Vrindavan village nearby, they began to think, oh, where, what is happening here? Something must be happening to our Krishna. <clears throat> and Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda, all the elderly cowherd people, all the gopas and gopis, now they began to rush very quickly from Vrindavan. And very quickly they came through the forest and came to the bank of the Jamuna. And there they saw their beloved Krishna. For the bridge bhasis, Krishna is their very life and soul. He is non-different than their very own heart. And if anything happens to their beloved Krishna, they want to immediately leave their bodies even. So when they came near to the bank of the Jamuna, Baladev Prabhu was also there with them, and he stopped them because Mother Yashoda, Nanda Maharaj, they want, especially Mother Yashoda, wanted to enter immediately into the waters of the Jamuna to save her beloved Krishna. But Baladev Prabhu, knowing the power of his younger brother Krishna, he stopped them, and now they were all watching Krishna from the banks of the Jamuna and watching this serpent Kaliya taking Krishna in his tentacles and forcing him under the water like this. And practically just by seeing this, the bridge bhasis were dying there on the banks of the river. So when Krishna saw that all the bridge bhasis and all the gopas and gopis, that they were weeping and crying and they were practically ready to leave their bodies, then at that time Krishna he decided to do battle with Kaliya. And suddenly, Krishna slightly expanded his body and immediately released himself from the coils of Kaliya. And when he released himself from the coils of Kaliya, suddenly he jumped up onto the top of the Kaliya's hoods. So many, so many hundreds of hoods Kaliya had. And now, Krishna, standing on the hoods of Kaliya, he began to dance. What kind of dancing? Krishna is called Brindavana Natabara. He mean, means the supreme dancer of Brindavan. So Krishna now very artfully, very artistically, he began to dance on the hoods of Kaliya, one by one, jumping from one to another. And as he was jumping from one to another, he was kicking the heads of Kaliya like this, kicking one after the other. And Kali was trying to bite Krishna, but Krishna was so expert that he constantly saw each hood coming and he was dancing and kicking them at the same time. It's very beautifully described in Ananda Vrindavan Champu by Srila Kavikarnapur, how Krishna was dancing. And that was... What the was? Maybe because of the movement of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now, as Krishna was dancing, all the demigods from the heavenly planets, they were also watching this scene. And in the heavenly planets, they have great musicians, Gandharvas, singers, and also heavenly dancers there, and musicians. So in order to accompany Krishna in his dancing, the demigods began to play the drum and to play musical instruments. And now Krishna was dancing very beautifully on Kaliya's heads. And as the drum was going, ta-ta-ta-i, ta-ta-toi, 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 
Now, uh, Krishna began to dance faster and faster and faster as the drum, as the, as the tempo of the drum beat uh, increased in speed. Krishna's dancing increased in speed. And he looked very amazing and fantastic. And as Krishna was dancing, he also glanced to the bank of the Jamuna as the gopis, the Braja gopis, they were watching because they were all very young at that time. And they had not seen Krishna dancing before. So at that time, Krishna glanced at them as if to say, yes, can you see? I'm a very good dancer. I will also dance with you in the future. <laughs> so, as Krishna was dancing and kicking the heads of Kaliya, oh, so Kali was becoming weaker and weaker. He was losing all of his vitality and strength. And as he danced more and more, finally Kali was practically finished. He was practically on the verge of death. And then at that time, uh, Kaliya had wives. They were called the Nagapatnis. And at that time, these wives, they emerged from the water and they surrounded their husband and they began to offer prayers to Krishna because actually they were devotees of Krishna. They were uh, Vaishnavis. And they began to glorify Krishna and they began to pray to Krishna for, on behalf of their husband, Kaliya. And they told to Krishna that this poor serpent, Kaliya, this is his nature, this is his tendency. You are the Supreme Lord uh, of all species of life. You have created all species of life and you have endowed them with their particular natures. So please forgive our husband for his, uh, for his envious kind of nature and please purify him. But we see that this serpent, Kaliya, our husband, we are very much amazed because uh, what kind of pious activities that he must have done in previous lives, that he is getting this opportunity to have the dust of your lotus feet, even your direct touch of your lotus feet on his heads. This is prayed for by the greatest demigods, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva. But here, this uh, ordinary serpent, he gets the opportunity to have your lotus feet touching his heads. In this way, oh, the Nagapatnis prayed so many different prayers to Krishna. And at that time, now Krishna became very satisfied. And he spoke to the Nagapatnis and he spoke to Kaliya Serpent. And he gave him the instruction that he should now go far away from the river Jamuna. He should uh, travel back into the great waters of the ocean and he should leave this area but he gave him his blessings. So from that time, Kaliya Serpent is still living within this world, and the, our devotees who live in Fiji, they know that actually Kaliya is there in that area of, of Fiji on our planet, even to this day. And uh, when our Srila Prabhupada went to Fiji, he installed in his temple that he established there, Kaliya Krishna deity, a deity of, of Krishna dancing on the serpent Kaliya. So when Krishna came now out of the waters of the Jamuna, after Kaliya had left, oh, all the bridge bhasis, it was like their life had returned to them. And Mother Yashoda came forward and embraced Krishna in her arms. Nanda Maharaj and Baladev and all the Sakas, all the gopis, they all surrounded Krishna. And they began to oh, just adore him in so many different ways. And in this way, Krishna, now being reunited with the Brijabhasis, now their, their lives were completely fulfilled and satisfied. But because it was late in the day, and because Krishna had gone into the river uh, for so long, so, so many hours, now Krishna went up onto one hilltop, which was just near to that place. And it is called uh, Dvarasha Aditya Tila, where the 12 Adityas came like suns in the sky. <coughs> and they dried Krishna's body as a service to him. And Krishna went with the uh, cowherd people there on the banks of the Jamuna. It was decided by Nanda Maharaj and the elderly cowherd men that now all the bridge bhasis, they should remain there for the evening. So they all formed circles and uh, concentric circles with Krishna in the middle and his parents and then surrounding there the elderly cowherd man and like this, all making big circles and they all took rest there on the bank of the Jamuna. 
But in Ananda Vrindavan Shampo, Kavi Karnapur describes that in the middle of the night, Krishna woke up and he was sitting up secretly, everyone else was sleeping, and the Braja Gopis, they also woke up, and Srimati Radharani was also sitting there, and through, simply through their glances, they were looking at each other. And all the Braja Gopis, at that time, they could understand by the glances of Krishna that he was mostly attracted to Srimati Radhika. So in this way, this Kaliya Lila pastime uh, has so many wonderful aspects of this Lila, and uh, uh, it's a very sweet pastime, so therefore, Srila Bhakti Vidur Thakur has included this within his song, Jasumati Nandana Prajabaranagara Gokula Ranjana Kana Gopi Paranadana Madana Manohara Kaliya Damana Vidhana. So Kaliya Lila Ki Jai. Why Kaliya came there? There is a history. And that history is that he used to be in Ramanakvi, but he has animal, animal <coughs> mode with. Here, Sauvari Rishi was first there in Jamna Harada. Kaliya Jamna And there he was naked, meditating. Day and night, in winter and in Greece. Yeah. At that time, Garud came and take one of the male fish, and all fishes began to weep. Then he calls that if Garud will come here, he will be finished. So Kali, Kali knew from Ramadat deep that. Oh, there I will be safe. Here always an ankle turns with Garud and Garud may kill me. So he came to this Kali Harada. And <coughs> by this, that Sabari Rishi gave course to Garud. Garud is a bhakta. And that is why Calm came, in, lust came in his heart and went to Mandhata Rishi and married his 50 daughters. And for a long time he was <laughs> sense gratification. But he forget his meditation and everything. At that time, he was thinking that even so many years and years I enjoyed this life, but I am not happy. And then he again came in Vrindavan and he did austerities and he went to Krishna. So, don't criticize any Vaishnava in your life. Whether he is wrong, but you should not dislike. It may be that you don't associate with them, but don't criticize. Then, <coughs> Tamana, you can. Fire, sacrifice, fire, 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 fire. How he saved his cows and friends. Agyanati Mirandasya, Jananjana Salakaya, Chakshur Unmilitam Yena, Tasma Sri Guru Venamaha, Vansha Kalpatarupyasya, Kripa Sindhu Vebacha, Patitanam Pavanepyo, Vaishnavepyo, Namona Maha. First of all, I offer my thousands of Dandavatanam unto the Lord's feet of my beloved Guru Dev. Om Vishnu Pāra Paramahamsa Pari Yurakacharya Astatapata Sri Srima Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Vaswami Maharaj. And also all the spiritual masters in our disciplic line coming from Srila Rupa Vaswami onto all Vaishnavas, Tridandi Sanyasis, all Vaishnavis, 
Vaishnavas and guests. Shri Guru Dev requests me, ordered me to speak on the pastime of Krishna and the coward boys, his friends, and the cows who were coming to Bandirvat. Yeah. Bandirvan is one of the forests in Vrindavan. They came there cow grazing and Krishna and all his friends sat down for prasadam, for picnic. They brought their uh, prasadam packets with them and they sat down in circles and everyone was thinking, all the coward boys, by Krishna's yoga maya potency, as if Krishna was sitting right in front of them. And many times we have heard how Krishna interacts, exchanges loving and affectionate uh, exchanges with his friends you know, by placing some morsel of prasadam in their mouth and they place it in Krishna's mouth. How wonderful these pastimes are, human-like, yeah? So these are so attractive that hearing these pastimes automatically we will become very attached to hearing again and again the wonderful glories of Krishna. So Krishna was sitting there with his cow friends and the cows were grazing and as cows they like to chew and eat and relish fresh grasses always. Yeah. So they were looking where is there some fresh grasses. And they, by wandering here and there, gradually they wandered away from Krishna and his coward friends. And they ended up in some area where there were a lot of dry bushes, dry, uh, like a forest, bamboo forest, very dry. <coughs> and suddenly a forest fire came. In the meantime, they tried to protect themselves and the coward boys, they were looking, where are the cows? They've left, they have wandered away, let us quickly bring them. So all the coward boys also left and were looking where the cows are. And they also came upon that place where the cows were trying to protect themselves from the forest fire and the forest fire came closer and closer. At that time, the coward boys called out, Krishna! Krishna, save us! Yeah. At once, Krishna came there. And Krishna looked at the situation, and in one moment, he saw this is a very dangerous situation. I have to protect my friends, the cows, everyone. What to do? Yeah. And he said, okay, close your eyes, everyone. So all the coward boys closed their eyes for a second and Krishna at once swallowed the fire, the forest fire. Then again, next moment, they all found themselves sitting at Bandir Van, under the Bandir Vat tree. Yeah, Krishna and coward friends exchanging morsels of prasadam, all the cows nearby. So there is some very wonderful teaching in this Pastime. All the pastimes of Krishna have wonderful teachings and this one, whatever I've heard from Gurudev and Vaishnavas and what I have remembered, I want to also share that with all of you. So what is the meaning here? The cows wandering away from Krishna. Cows are compared here to go. Go means cows, also go means senses. Our senses, they are always looking for some new experience, yeah, some fresh experience. Even we have Mahaprasadam here. Today I heard that there were more devotees assembled in the health food store than here in the <laughs> pavilion, yeah. So the senses always want to taste something nice, yeah, something which is relishable, yeah. Even we are with Krishna and Vaishnavas, yeah, still our senses are wondering how it will be to be somewhere else and have some special opportunity to enjoy sense gratification, to make some money or to be with our family or to take some interest in the things that we have gathered yeah, during 
our lifetime, our pet animals, our cars, our houses, yeah, all the things we have relationship with, our grandchildren, our children, <laughs> we all know this, that this is very strong attachment. So the senses are always wandering away from Krishna, from Guru and Vaishnavas, yeah, to taste something which we think is happiness. But lo and behold, very soon we may end up in a forest fire. What is this forest fire? It devours everything. Yeah? It devours the very good fortune of the Atma, the soul. Finally we have come, arrived in the human form of life. And we have arrived at the lotus feet of Sadguru. Yeah? We are surrounded by well-wishers. Yeah? Those who are sincerely interested to share that wealth which they have received from Guru and Vaishnavas. Yeah? Don't run away, don't let your mind or senses go away. In this regard, yeah, yesterday we heard the history of Dena Kasur. Yeah? I want to just mention a little story in this regard. Dena Kasur is compared to ignorance. Yeah? We do not know what is good for us. We think we know better, we are very intelligent. But only if we take full shelter at the lotus feet of Sadguru, then we will be safe. Yeah? This is the only remedy, which was clearly uh, heard yesterday in the description of Dena Kasur. Our intelligence is like a donkey. Yeah? Our senses are foolish. Yeah? In this regard, there is a beautiful history, which some of you may have heard. I've remembered something. I always remember this history. There were two donkeys. They were brothers, yeah, and one donkey was engaged with a washerman, working very hard, carrying loads of clothes, and day and night, yeah, he had hardly any time to take rest. He was engaged in the service of the washerman. His brother had no engagement. He was grazing, yeah, all day long, drinking fresh river water, and he was very happy. Time to time they met. Yeah? And brother said to the other donkey, why don't you come and stay with me? Yeah? Why are you working so hard? I have fresh grasses, water, everything is there. Why you are wasting your time? What good is it that you do? Then the other donkey said, I'll be coming. Yeah? Just give me one week and I'll be coming. Okay? I'll join you. After one week, they met again, and the other donkey said, let's, co let's come, yeah? give up this situation with your washerman. Why should you waste your energy like that? I have free, fresh grasses for you, very tasty water, everything is there, nothing to do, no work. Yeah? The donkey said, okay, I'm coming, but give me just a few more days. Yeah? Then after a few days, again they met, and the donkey said, who was relishing the grasses and the water. Now you should come. Yeah. Then the other donkey said, I really want to come, but give me one more day. Yeah. Then the other donkey said, why are you delaying and delaying? Yeah. Then the other donkey said, listen, he said, daily I am working yeah, with this washerman. And one day, yeah, this washerman has a beautiful Maid servant engaged in ironing the clothes. So, just about two weeks ago, yeah, that beautiful lady was ironing the clothes and she burned the clothes. Yeah. And the washerman said, You foolish girl, do that one more time and I marry you to that donkey. <laughs> so the donkey said, I'm waiting. One more time, she will burn the clothes and uh, she will marry me. Yeah? So this is our foolishness. Maya is always telling. Just now coming. Happiness is just around the corner. Yeah? Make one more attempt. Yeah? So this is our foolish ignorance, donkey-like ignorance. Yeah? Anyone may show up and say, I have this beautiful opportunity for you. Yes, come, but Gurudev is there, coming every year, reminding us, come with me, come to Vrindavan, come to Navadweep, and 
Here the glory is the powerful Harikata from Guru and Vaishnavas and you will be saved forever. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Speak on Jagya Patni. In brief. Namah Vishnu Krishna 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 Sri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamane. Namaste Sarasati Devi Vajrani Pachari Nimi Vishwesha Sinirari Paschati Deshitari Namam Vishnu Pradaya Radhikaya Sriyatmane Sri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Narayani Dinam First I offer my most humble obeisances under to my Diksha Guru with Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada and then again at the lotus feet of my Shiksha Guru so, Srila Gurudev has ordered me <coughs> to speak something about the Yagyapatnis. These are the wives of the Brahmanas. And in this pastime in Srimad Bhagavatam, it begins that Krishna and Balaram are in the forest. They have wandered a little bit away from Braj near to Mathura. And that morning, somehow, they did not get breakfast. So the cowherd boys became quite hungry. So they asked Krishna that, what will you do about this? We are all hungry, how you will feed us? So Krishna, he told them that just nearby here, there are Brahmins who are engaged in performing yagya, fire sacrifice. But you should know that they are not actually my devotees. They are smart Brahmins. They are persons who are engaged in Karmakanda and Jnanakanda and the ritualistic activities. But if you ask them on behalf of my brother Balaram, because he is a Kshatriya, then maybe they will give you food on his behalf. So the cowherd boys went there to see these Brahmins. And very humbly, they bowed down to the Brahmins, offered their respects, and said that, O oh, deities of the earthly planet, gods of the earthly planet, you please help us. Just nearby, Ramachutta, Krishna and Balaram are just grazing the cows in a nearby forest. Could you please provide us with some food to feed them? But the Brahmins did not respond. They did not say yes, they did not say no. And by calling them Rama and Achyuta, telling that they were the supreme personalities of Godhead, Rama and uh, Krishna, infallible Krishna, they were hoping that these Brahmins would understand to whom they were asking for the food. But they did not understand. And they gave no response. Then they told them, Oh, your yagya is at a certain point right now, a certain interval. At this interval, at this point, you could take the food and give it to Krishna and Balaram, who are hungry, and it will not spoil your yagya. But still, the Brahmins did not respond. And in this way, the cowherd boys gave so many arguments to the Brahmins why they should bring the food and give the food that even any person is hungry, what to speak of Krishna and Balaram, they should provide them with the food. But the Brahmins neither said yes or no, nothing, no response whatsoever. At this point, Sukadev Goswami is addressing Maharaj Parikit as chastiser of the enemies because Parikit Maharaj is becoming angry to think that Krishna and Balaram, who are the objects of affection of his father, uh, Arjuna, grandfathers, Yudhisthira and Arjuna, etc., was being neglected by these Brahmins. And so Sukadev Goswami was indicating that, yes, if you were there, oh, chastise were the enemy, certainly you would chastise them for their neglect, their negligence. So at this point, the cowherd boys now returned. 
these Brahmins, they could not understand. Although they were practicing, <coughs> studying the Vedas, although they were uh, reciting mantras, although they were performing yagya, they did not understand Vedaisya Savair Aham Meva Vedya Vedanta Krit Veda Vid Sarvata. That Krishna, by all the Vedas, Krishna is to be known. He is both the compiler of the Vedas and he is the knower of the Vedas. This they did not understand. They did not understand Bhoktaram Yagnatapasam Sarvaloka Maheshwaram Suridam Sarvabhutanam. They did not understand that Krishna is the, the enjoyer of all yagna. He is the beneficiary of all yagya, of all sacrifice. These things were not known to the Brahmins. They were smarter Brahmins. In fact, Bhakti Vinod Thakur says in Krishna Samhita, they were ass-like Brahmins. <laughs> that is his description. Of that. And although Bhakti Vinod Thakur says that those Brahmins who understand that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God and offer the fruits of their yagya to them, they are not asked like Brahmins. But these Brahmins, they were. So when the cowherd boys returned to Krishna and Balaram and told that these Brahmins will not even respond to us, yes or no, and gave us no food whatsoever, Krishna laughed. This laugh was actually to try and assuage the uh, despondency of the cowherd boys and make them understand that when you go begging, that in begging, sometimes you will get refused. So then Krishna told them, all right, the wives of the Brahmins, you go and you visit these persons. You see these wives of the Brahmins. They are my great devotees. Surely they will give you food to eat. So then the cowherd boys went back to a house nearby the Yagyashala, where all the wives of the Brahmins were sitting very well dressed, they were from the higher Brahmin caste, aristocracy, well dressed, bangles, nice saris, well decorated, very beautiful features, sitting there in nice elegant scene in the home. And when they came, they offered their obeisances to the Brahminis and told that our dear Brahmin, my dear Brahminis, you please help us, Krishna and Balaram are nearby. And as soon as they mentioned the names of Krishna and Balaram, all of the wives of the Brahmins fainted in ecstasy. So, the question may be asked, how is it that these wives of the Brahmins were so devoted to Krishna? How they got this very, very great level of Krishna consciousness, this very high level of brain? And the answer is that the flower sellers and the fruit sellers from Mathura were going to Braj and selling flowers and fruits in Braj. And they were meeting with Krishna and they were seeing the pastimes of Krishna and they became great devotees of Krishna. Then after they became great devotees of Krishna, they would return and they would tell the Brahminis when they would sell them flowers and fruits, oh, you should see that beautiful boy, Krishna. What activities he performs, how beautiful he is, how gorgeous his features are, how well he plays the flute. Like this, they were giving so many descriptions of the great qualities, pastimes, form of Krishna. So, hearing the name of Krishna, just hearing his name, their ecstasy became so great, immediately they fainted. Then, the ball cowherd boys told that you please help us. Krishna and Balaram are hungry. Then Srila Prabhupada says in his Krishna book that spontaneously they immediately got up. And with great spontaneous attraction for Krishna and Balaram, they immediately gathered themselves together and started gathering all the foodstuffs from the Yagya. So many nice, delectable and palatable dishes to bring it to see Krishna and Balaram. And hurrying very quickly, they left behind their wives, their husbands, their sons, their fathers, their duties, everything. They left it behind. They made no care for it whatsoever. Just like the gopis, even though they tried to stop them, all the members of their family tried to impede their access to the forest to see Krishna and Balaram. The, the brahmanis had no care for them whatsoever and immediately went. And upon arriving there, 
at the forest and seeing Krishna, the description of Krishna, his long and splendid limbs, his beautiful blackish hue, his hair, deep blue blackish color with beautiful curls surrounding his face like a full moon decorated with different unguents, colors of minerals from the ground with the decorations and different designs upon his face and tilak and so many beautiful colors in his yellow garment. He was just shining resplendent. And as soon as the Brahmani saw this beautiful form of Krishna, who was leaning against Balaram like this and holding in his hand one toy lotus. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says he's twirling this toy lotus. And initially he, it appears that he is toying with the hearts of the Brahminis. But actually, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says that the indication of his twirling of the heart of this lotus is to tell the Brahmini that in fact my heart is spinning out of love for you and seeing you. And then the wives of the Brahmanas, seeing Krishna's form in this way, having meditated on Krishna constantly, chanting his name, hearing his glories for days and days and days, they now invited Krishna into their, through the door of their eyes, into the chamber of their heart, where he laid down with them on a bed of flowers and embraced them to their full satisfaction. This description is given there by Vishwanath Chakravarti. So in this way, the Brahmanis now experience this ecstasy of meeting the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna. At that time, after meeting him, then the Brahmanis, they went, uh, were told by Krishna that you must return home. And they're being asked to return home, they protested as the gopis did. But even though they protested as the gopis did, Krishna told them, it is not good in the eyes of society that we should meet physically that we should have power more relations. You must return home and constantly remember me, chant my holy name, meditate on my form, my pastimes, my activities, and being absorbed in this way, increase your love for me through separation. So well, therefore Krishna wanted to increase their viraha, their separation mood. It is said by Chakor, Thakur Vishwanath that E even though the gopis did not return home and danced with Krishna the whole night and the brahminis went home by the order of Krishna, still both of them achieved unalloyed Krishna Prem. And when they returned home, there, upon arriving at home, they started to exhibit the different symptoms of ecstasy, trembling, shedding of tears, faltering voice, etc. And by Exhibiting these ecstasies, their husbands became so overwhelmed with the Krishna prema that they were exhibiting that they themselves started to become devotees of Krishna. They themselves started to understand that Krishna was the Supreme Personality of God and they had committed a great offense against him. They themselves no longer saw their wives as their property and that they were the gurus of their wives. But in fact, they accepted their wives as their gurus to teach them about Krishna Prema and Krishna Bhakti. Such a great thing has turned around by this activities of the Brahmins. And then, to finish this story, because a very important point comes at the end, that these Brahmanas now were cursing themselves, that to hell with our rituals, our performances of sacrifices, our thrice-born position, all of these things are useless. You cannot see the form of Krishna by the performance of reading, studying Vedas, the performance of sacrifice, giving in charity, doing tapasya, none of these things. Uh, that this is the only process, Tvananyaya Bhakti, undivided devotional service. 
as it is said by Rupa Goswami, Anibhilashita Shunyam Ganakamaniya. And so the Brahmins, although they had accepted their Brahminis as their gurus, although they had accepted Krishna, although they were chanting his name, although they were meditating on him, when they got up to go to see Krishna, they became fearful because they were close to Mathura. And they knew that Kamsa was there. And if Kamsa would see them, he would kill them. So out of fear, they never went to see Krishna. And they never got his darshan. So his wi their wives all were much more exalted than them. Thank you. Thank you. Why Krishna allowed gopis and he danced with gopis in Ras Lila? But why he told Brahminis to return back and they returned back? Why? Because only gopi they can be with Krishna and go. No Brahman, Brahma are respected to Krishna. So he anyhow told them to return back and they returned back. But what happened? They began to chant, remember, as who as he told. And after that they will be gopi. And then they can dance and sing with. Otherwise, no. Krishna, why he did Ras? Why he did Ras? You? Yes. <coughs> what for? Huh? 